about this area to me. We've got some, looks like a stuffed turkey, maybe. <laughs> some cuts of seafood over there, perhaps. Some kind of fruit in a basket. in the game. This is a Silvari. 
visual design of these areas, this area specifically, the labyrinthine cliffs, is really a hodgepodge of Asian influences and, and North African influences and all kinds of stuff, which is in keeping with the, uh, the history of the, the Zephyrites, those um, nomads, those sky nomads I mentioned because they uh, come from all over the place in this game, but mostly Acantha, which is kind of Guild Wars Asia, and Alona, which is kind of Guild Wars North Africa. So, um, but there's all kinds of diverse visual styles and influences in this area. skyships that's actually belonging to the, the Pact fleet, which is an alliance of um, races that is uh, teamed up against the Elder Dragons, which are sort of the main antagonists in this game. We've got uh, kind of little gnome people, these are called Asura. that you see here right now. Most of the real people were down below, but I'm sure we'll encounter some more players. I just love the scale of this area. The updraft that you see over there is exactly what you think it is. We can glide, and we can grab that updraft to gain elevation. Here's a player, <laughs> kind of wigging out. Uh, they have a sky scale. It's that dragon-like thing that they're riding on. This is a quartz crystal deposit that I could mine, but I won't right now. Let's go take a better look at these water wheels. This is a Springer. Aren't they cute? They're one of the mounts that you can use to leap vertically. The mounts in this game have so much character. Their animations are excellent. Look almost like prayer flags. 
flags up here. Just a door, the sounds of all the chimes. Massive lantern up there. And huge Zephyrite murals. All over the cliff sides. Have one more aspect crystal type, which we'll pick up, and it allows us to kind of slingshot ourselves 
from one of these lightning circles to a corresponding lightning tower right across the way. So let's do this. Ta-da! It's kind of like jumping, but instead of the that big vertical jump we did earlier, it's more of a horizontal jump for traversing wider gaps. We're slowly making our way up, <laughs> up, up, up. Those windmills are really going. It's pretty windy up there. Ah, oh, it's uh, another frog person just walked through that Norn. <laughs> A different species or subspecies of frog person. There are lots of wild races and creatures in this game. <clears throat> okay, we can make our way across here now again. Just like that. I'll remind you again that usually when you're playing this game, you're in third person and you're running around a lot faster, so I honestly think it's pretty amazing that Everything looks as good as it does, even when I'm in first person like this and right up close and personal with everything. I love these windmills. From way up here we can look back down on the, the cliffs that we just traversed. the 
amazing Choya, actually. Not quite sure. So, uh, I keep teasing um, these mounts, which are definitely a major part of this game. So, uh, let's... Oh, right on cue, someone comes by on their mount. Let's uh, just uh, zoom out here a little bit to the third person. There we are. This is my character. <laughs> Um, and, uh, let's mount up. Uh, so one of the most useful mounts is this one right here. This is the sky scale. And, uh, the animations are so good. I just love the, the character that is imbued in these, these mounts. Just even the idle animations are so good. If you're wondering why there's little tiny yaks running by, they're participating in a race. That's the finish line right there. Um, why are they tiny yaks? That's that's a harder question. But they get transformed into little dull yaks, they're called, for the duration of the race. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, this is the bioluminescent sky scale. And, uh, the sky scale can fly, as you might presume, based on the wings. Why don't we go up to the highest point, way up there, and get a, a real bird's eye view of everything. Up we go. Let's just land here. The sky scale can fly vertically. It's the only mount that can do that, that can fly straight up, but it does mean that uh, uh, it runs out of stamina quite quickly doing that, so you kind of have to take little breaks. And I mentioned earlier that um, there's another mount, the Springer, that bouncy looking one, uh, that can do vertical traversal, and that's true, but uh, the sky scales even a little more capable, I would say than the Springer at Vertical Traversal. So, um, we've made it up quite high here, and this banner that we're standing on is actually the beginning of a challenge, which um, we're not going to do right now, but I will show you the, uh, the mount that is associated with this challenge. Uh, so let's unmount from our sky scale here. Let's mount up on our griffin. This is the griffin. And the griffin is maybe my favorite mount in the game. Uh, not only is it beautiful, this person keeps reappearing here because they keep failing the challenge. They keep restarting it. There they go. Uh, not only is the griffin beautiful, but it's also capable of some incredible acrobatics. Shall we go for a little griffin flight? I think we should. So, the griffin is great for soaring around, for admiring this beautiful area from the sky. But it's also great for diving and doing some pretty cool stuff. Do you want to see it in action? Let's see if I can figure this out with a controller. Here we go. <laughs> we can swoop back up. We can swoop back down and back up again. As we cruise around. That was maybe not the most dramatic example that I could have shown you, but <laughs> I'm just getting used to navigating the Griffin uh, using my controller setup that I've got here, so. Um, so now we're back down below where we started, but let's, let's go do a little exploration out this way. How about go for a little run here. Uh, this zone 
is actually pretty small as they go. Um, the zones in this game get very large, and the map of Tyria is extensive. But um, this is actually a good place for me to show you uh, one of those other mounts I talked about, which is the Springer, our bouncy boy right here. Uh, the Springer is adorable, for starters. Look at it. Holy crap, it's cute. I've got an icy skin on this Springer right now, but they come in all different designs. All the mounts. Uh, let's go for a bounce. Let's see if we can get up on top of this. It's basically a giant bunny rabbit. Jackrabbit type thing. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Oops. Let's see if we can get up here. Ta da! Yeah, let's slow it down a little bit. When he's moving slow. He just kind of hops along on all fours. It's very cute. Like that. <laughs> I love the moonlight on the cave walls up there, the canyon walls. Isn't that pretty? Got this little bamboo forest growing up here. a treasure 
or scavenger hunt that takes place out here on the water, well, and on the cliffs as well. There's also a mount race that comes through here. But one of the cool things about the skimmer that they added a little while ago is the ability to dive below the waves. Check it out. We can traverse these underwater areas. Hello, Mr. Shark. I'll try not to bother the shark. <laughs> Don't really want to get eaten here. Not looking for combat today. But you can enjoy these lovely reefs. There is underwater combat in Guild Wars 2. Um, there's a whole different set of weapons for underwater combat and different set of totally unique combat skills that you can use underwater. Cruise around over here. You guys want to relax on the beach for a little bit? <laughs> Just hang out. There's like a little cabana over there. <laughs> hey, check it out. It's a party, you guys. Just a regular old shindig. Bunch of NPCs having a good time. It's probably doing the skimmer race. forward to having 
you back here.